Numbers chapter 27. I'm going to read several verses to gain the thought. We'll get to the message. The Bible says in verse number 1, Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machar, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mela, Noah, and Hogla. I'm going to stop right there. If you got a daughter named Hogla, she's not getting a prom date. You know what I'm saying? I'm reading that and all I can think of is suey, suey, suey. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of jokes right there. But I better move on because that's nowhere in the message. Poor God bless her, poor lady. Probably the most beautiful lady out of the bunch, but that name, Hogla. Anyway, and Milka and Terza. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, Our father died in the wilderness and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family because he hath no son? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause, cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. And thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. If he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. If he hath, have no brethren, ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father hath no brethren, then ye shall give it his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it, and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We certainly thank you for the good singing. Thank you for those young people up there singing their hearts out. Lord, it bless me. Lord, I'm thankful I know you today. Thankful for the good grace of God. God, I'm glad you don't give us what we deserve. You gave us grace. Lord, I'm glad you hold back what we do deserve. You give us mercy. And God, we're thankful to be in your house this morning. Now, I do pray, Father, for Brother Donald White and his family, the passing of his mother this morning. Pray for Brother Steve Davis and his family and the passing of his mother. Pray for um, the Ferris family and the passing of a loved one. I pray for Miss Mary. I do pray, Lord, for Brother Bobby. I pray for Brother Bob. I pray for others who are sick or providentially hindered, not able to be with us this morning. God, you'd be with them. But I pray for the next few minutes, Lord, that you put a hedge about this place. And Father, I pray you'd reveal yourself in a sweet and in a special way. I pray you'd speak to our hearts. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ would be uplifted and magnified. And I pray that uh, the sweet Holy Ghost of God would not be grieved or quenched, but would be allowed to do his office work. And I pray you'd speak to hearts this morning. Father, I pray that you'd send revival in these days. And Father, I pray when we leave, we'll be different than when we came. Now, Father, you alone know the need of every heart. You know our down-sitting, our uprising. Father, you know our yesterdays, our todays, and even our tomorrows. And Father, you know what people stand in need of. There may be somebody here in the valley this morning. There may be somebody here today struggling. There may be somebody here today uh, that just needs help from the Lord. There may be somebody seeking answers. Uh, there may be somebody that just needs to step out in obedience on faith. God, whatever the need is... Uh, I pray that the sweet Holy Spirit of God would reveal the need and reveal the answer. I certainly do pray in a crowd this size 
there be anybody lost and undone without Christ, that today would be the day of their salvation. Now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Help us, Lord. Uh, help us to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, and, Father, uh, I pray your will would be accomplished. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. And amen. I want you to notice a few things here about Zelophehad's daughters. I want you to notice, first of all, um, they showed great boldness in verse number 4. We find that uh, 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 they came before uh, Moses and Eleazar the priest, uh, and they, in verse number 4, had a great request. They said, Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he hath no son. Uh, Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. We find that these uh, young ladies came before the council and with great boldness asked for something uh, that for two time was not afforded them. They asked for a possession of land. Uh, now you've got to understand that in the Bible days it was a different economy than today. In the Bible days, women didn't have rights. They didn't have a voice. Matter of fact, women were treated like property. And just that these uh, young ladies came before the council showed great boldness, uh, and they asked for a possession. Uh, now notice uh, what they did brought lasting change. I won't read the rest of the verses, but uh, Moses inquired of the Lord, and the Lord said, these ladies are right, uh, and uh, they do deserve an inheritance. As a matter of fact, make it a statue from this day forward in Israel uh, that if a man has no son, it goes to his daughter. If he had no children, it uh, goes to his brother. If he doesn't have a brother, it uh, goes to his next of kin. I mean, he makes provision uh, for everybody, uh, and it was brought about by their boldness. Aren't you glad uh, when the Lord Jesus went to Calvary, he made provision for everybody? Uh, hey, before then, under the law, only the Jews had a right to the things of God. Uh, but God made a way uh, where we could all inherit heaven. What a blessing, huh? So we see that uh, they uh, 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 showed great boldness, and they brought about lasting change. Uh, but I want you to see something else about them. They lived with a blemished heritage. Look at verse number 3. It says, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah. If you remember, Korah withstood Moses, said that he was not God's man, and withstood uh, 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 the things that God was instituting in Israel. Uh, and uh, uh, my dear friends, God took care of them. He opened up the earth and swallowed them up, uh, and he took away uh, any right of uh, the, uh, the heritage of Korah after that. These ladies said, our, our father wasn't of that part. They, he died in the wilderness, but he wasn't of that crowd. But look what they said. But he died in his own sin, and he had no sons. I'm interested in that thought, but he died in his own sin. And I want to preach with God's help this morning on what causes one to die in their sins. Can I say, the Bible makes it clear that Jesus tasted death for every man. The Bible makes it clear that it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Can I say that it's God's will that everybody get forgiveness of their sins? So what would cause one to die in their sins? Can I say, first of all, some die in their sins because they enjoy the pleasure of sin. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.25, uh, speaking of Moses, to, that he choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I'm here to tell you today that sin is deadly. Mm, can I say the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, but the wages of sin is death. Sin is deadly. But can I say there is pleasure in sin for a season. You know why people sin? Because they enjoy it. Hmm? 
Can I say that sin can be enjoyable? Can I say that a lot of people start out uh, getting involved in things that they enjoy, but the problem with sin is, Miss Melissa, uh, you may be able to enjoy it for a while, but the enjoyment runs out. And Brother Brian, when sin gets a hold of you, you can't break its chains. Mm -mm. There's a lot of people that enjoy sin for a season. But they continue sinning because now they have an addiction or they have a problem with it or they don't know how to get out of it. I've got good news. There's only one way out of sin and his name is Jesus Christ. Hey, you cannot stop sinning on your own. Uh, and even if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, while you live in this flesh, uh, you'll still be tempted to sin. Uh, but I can say sin cannot have dominion over you uh, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he breaks the bondage of sin, uh, and he, my dear friends, can help you with your sin. You say, yeah, but serving Jesus, there's no pleasure in that. Well, you don't know the Jesus I know. I'm having the time of my life. Huh? Can I say, I do all the sinning I want to do. I do all the drinking I want to do. I do all the dope I want to do. I do all the carousing around in the filth of this world that I want to do. There's this problem, Brother Ray, I don't want to do those things. Huh? Because when Jesus saved me, he changed me. He changed my want-tos. I have a different want to. I don't want to do those things. Now, Brother Jim, that's not to say that in this flesh, this flesh don't crave some of those things. Hmm? I want to tell you something. There are folks that are in this building today that lived a hard life before they met the Lord. And the Lord changed their eternal outlook. Now they have everlasting life. But they're still in this body of flesh. And this body of flesh still craves things that it used to be involved in. Amen. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, if you'll submit to the inner man rather than the outer man, the inner man will control that outer man. Hmm? Uh, you say, well, what about people that succumb to the old ways? Well, I'm glad for 1 John 1, 9. It says if we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, I'm glad the Lord is for us. But some die in their sin because they just enjoy the pleasure of sin. Can I say some die in their sin because of pride? They know they, they're, they're caught up in sin. They know they need to get right with the Lord and they need to get their sin forgiven, but they're just so full of that stinking pride. You know what the Bible says about pride in Proverbs 16, 18? Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Psalms 10, 4 says, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. 1 Peter 5, 5 says, For God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Amen. There's something that is in the inherent nature of man that is prideful. And we don't like to admit we're wrong. And there are some people that will die in their sin because of pride. Can I say that there are some who die in their sin because they just think they got plenty of time to get right with God? Oh, yeah. Amen. Mm. We all know we're going to face the Lord. We just don't think we're going to face Him today. Right. Amen. Mm. Uh, Hebrews 9.27 says, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. We all know we're going to die. We just don't think it's going to be today. You know, about every hour, there's a certain amount of people who die, and every day, some 7,000 people in the United States of America alone will die sure. every day. You say, well, it won't be me today. How do you know that? The Bible says in James 4, 14, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time, then vanisheth away. Uh, you can go to a graveyard today, you'll find babies there, you'll find children there, you'll find teenagers there, you'll find uh, young adults, middle-aged people, and old people there. Death is no respecter of persons. From the moment you take your first breath, death gets on your trail. God's put a number on all of our lives, but he doesn't let us know what the number is. Luke 12, 20 says, But God said unto him, Thou fool, 
this night thy soul shall be quiet of thee. That fellow said, I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. But didn't know that night the death angel was coming for him. Some people die in their sin because they, they have all intentions of getting right with God. They just think they got plenty of time. A lot of people got the mindset, I'm going to get right with God on my deathbed. There's only one problem. Some people don't get a deathbed. Right, right, right. Hmm. Right. They, they die in a car crash. They die of a sudden heart attack. They die of a stroke. Hmm. Everybody thinks they got plenty of time. Hmm. Preach one time about spiritual Russian roulette. We just keep spinning the cylinder of the Revolver of life and pulling the trigger. Friend, one day there's going to be a payday. Some people die in their sin because they thought they had plenty of time. Can I say there are some people that die in their sin? And the kids just sang about it. Because their perception has been blinded. You see, there are a lot of folks don't realize they've got to give an account of their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people don't know there is a way of salvation. There's a lot of people that really don't even know they're sinners. They're just doing what comes naturally to them. Why do they do that? Well, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 tells us, In whom the God of this world, the sorry no good devil, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. They're blinded. You were blinded too until somebody told you the truth and shared the Lord with you. The Lord took the blinders off and you realized you was a sinner. Can I say this? No one will ever get saved from their sins until they realize they're a sinner. Hmm? The devil blinds them through all kinds of ways. Sometimes he blinds them through worship and religion. There are a lot of people going to a church today and they think they're okay because they went to a church. And the devil's got them blinded right where they're at. Hmm? A lot of people are religious. They think because I'm religious, I'm okay. You know what religion brings? Damnation. Salvation is not in religion. It's in a person and his name's Jesus Christ. Uh, and Jesus will deliver you from your sins and save your never dying soul. Uh, uh, the Bible said in Matthew 7 verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Uh, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, but depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Even when Jesus walked upon earth in John chapter 3, one of the most religious men of the day, Nicodemus came to him by night uh, and said, uh, We know thou art uh, uh, of God because no one could do the works that you do except God sent him. Uh, and the Lord said unto this religious man, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you are born again, you shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Hmm? Yep. Can I say, uh, religion won't save you, but a relationship with Christ will. And the devil blinds people to think they're okay through worship and through religion. But he also blinds them through their works. A lot of people say, look at the money I gave to charity. Look what I did. Look how many times I went to church. I've been baptized. I was a member of church. I did this. I did this. I did this. It don't matter what you do. It matters what Christ's done for you. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3, 5. Not for the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us uh, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, 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 can I say, uh, uh, it's just like what happened to Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar when the Lord sent a handwriting on the wall. He said this, Thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Hmm. Listen. If you're depending on your merit to get you to heaven, you're not going to heaven. The devil's blinded you. Look, it's good to be charitable. It's good to do good things for other people. It's good to lend a helping hand. It's good to be a part of a church. It's good to be baptized. But they all have to be done in the right perspective, and they all come after you get saved by the good grace of God. Can I say this? He blinds a lot of people by putting worthless examples of Christianity before them. 
Every lost person that you talk to will tell you they won't come to church because there's a bunch of hypocrites that go to church. And you know what, Miss Kathy, I can't really default them because I've met a lot of hypocrites at church. I won't mention any names, Brother Tommy, but I met a lot of them at church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Huh? No. Then there's a lot of people who claim they know God, but they live like the devil. Right. And the devil's quick to point them out. Yeah. Brother Ray, tell you, we, we was knocking on doors one time years ago. We was knocking on doors. We invited folks to church. They said, is that one family still go to church down there? I said, yeah. I said, well, if they're going to heaven, we don't have anything to worry about. You remember that? And we couldn't refute them. So that family's crooks. They're worthless. But can I say that's how the devil blinds people? He said, well, if they're okay, I'm okay. Uh, he's blinded. There, there's, there's some people that die in, in, in their sin because their perception has been blinded by the devil. Hmm. Listen, I've talked to a lot of people in my 49 years of being saved. And it amazes me how people will always measure their standing with God compared to other people. Yeah. Miss Marcy, if I had to compare myself to somebody to get to heaven, I'd just point out Marcy. I'd say, look at her. She, she's just, I'm better than her. You know what I'm saying? Huh? You say, that's funny, brother. But that's what we do. Right. We'll find somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer and say, well, that guy's going to hell. Somebody like Adolf Hitler, that guy's going to hell. I'm better off than him. Though the problem is, the Bible says there's none that doeth good. No, not one. We're not to compare ourselves to them. We're to compare ourselves to Christ. And we all come short of his glory. That's why we need him to save us. He's the one who lived a sinless, perfect life. Uh, and he went to the cross of Calvary to become our substitute, our sacrifice. Uh, he died a death that he shouldn't die, the, a death that we should have died. Uh, 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 he paid a debt that we could never pay. Uh, he, my dear friends, paid our sin debt. Uh, the darling Son of God left heaven, came to this earth uh, uh, to pay our sin debt that you and I, could have our sins forgiven. And we do him a great disservice when we compare ourselves to somebody else. But that's how the devil blinds people. Huh? Can I say this? Why would somebody die in their sins? Some die because they're an unrepentant prodigal. I love Luke 15, the prodigal son story. I hate that the prodigal son got in trouble I mean he's at the father's house and he asked the father for something that really wasn't rightfully his he asked for a portion of his inheritance didn't even wait for the father to die and he took that uh, 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 the kindness of the father and what the father gave him and he went to a far country and he spent it in riotous living and he ran out of money and by the way sooner or later you'll run out and he finds himself in a hog pen after joining himself to be a servant of that country. Worst place you can ever find a Jewish young man is in a hog pen. He's out there feigning, wishing that he had what the hogs had to eat. Now, I've never been that hungry. Now, I know you all think I'm a city slicker. I did grow up in the country. I've seen what hogs eat. Not interested. Hmm. I've smelled hog manure after they've eaten it. Not interested. That's the worst time to ever be in the country is when the farmers are putting a, a, a fertilizer on the field and they use hog manure. Uh, I'll never forget Cindy one time we was going on, on a college visit. She took a nap like she always does in the car. She took a nap. And we had to go way up in Ohio. We went through this uh, real country section in Ohio. And she woke up about the time that we got there where the, the farmers had just freshly fertilized the fields. She said, what in the world is that smell? I told her, that's college life. That's what that is right there. <laughs> Needless to say, she did not go to that college. Mm -mm. Why? Because of the smell. Well, that's where that young man was. But he came to himself. He said, even the hired servants of my father's house got it better than his. He said, I'm going to go home. 
He said, I'm going to tell my father that I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against him. No more make me your son. Just let me be a hired servant at your house. Uh, and he did that. He had to go back the same road he kept left on. Uh, and he got there. But what he didn't know uh, is what he was going to get when he got home. Uh, hey, uh, he come around that last bend. The father's out there on the porch uh, looking down the road. Uh, said, look at that fellow walking there. That fellow kind of walks like my boy. Uh, he said, that is my boy uh, and the father ran and fell on him and kissed him uh, hey uh, then he said bring forth uh, uh, my best robe and bring forth the ring and bring forth shoes for his feet and kill the fatted calf uh, for my son which was lost has been found uh, hey what a blessing uh, 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 he was excited to see his boy uh, his boy true to his word said father I've sinned against heaven Sin against you, make me one of your hired servants. Father didn't even hear any of it. He's just kissing him, kissing him, kissing him. Uh, and restored him to sonship. Amen. The beauty of that story is the father fell on him because under the law that boy should have been stoned. But the father said, if you're going to stone him, you've got to stone me first. And the beauty about being saved and under the blood of the Lamb, in order to get to us, they've got to go through him and they're not going to defeat him. What a blessing. Uh, I'm glad even a prodigal can find his way home. Hallelujah. But some prodigals are so embarrassed, they just stay in a hog pen. Some prodigals feel so worthless, they just stay up in the hog pen. Amen. Some prodigals just really don't understand that God does love them even enough to forgive them a second time. Amen. And they stay in the hog pen. I remember Brother Frank Stinson. Boy, isn't, isn't heaven going to be wonderful? We get to go see the Savior and be with Him forever, but we also get to go and see those loved ones that's been, yeah. went, been on before. So, yeah. old, old Brother Frank, oh, what a jewel he was. Clint, you'd have loved Brother Frank. Brother Frank... Went through a situation. His wife left him. He's a song leader in the church, big church up in Cincinnati. That happened in a time when the Baptist faith, if you got a divorce, you was the devil yourself. Hmm? Frank got out of church. You'd have loved him, Brother Ron. That church 30 years. Hmm. We was having a revival meeting, Brother Eddie Davis preaching. Brother Frank Stewart won Frank Stinson to the Lord. So he called Frank and said, Hey, we're having a revival over church. Why don't you come? Brother Frank came. Didn't take six weeks of revival. Didn't take, I mean, that first time he came to church. Invitations going on. Brother Eddie's giving the invitation. He comes and he grabs Brother Frank Stewart with one hand, grabs me with another hand, drags us to the altar and says, Boys, I need to get right with God. And he did rest of his life he lived for Jesus Christ used to pray all week long Lord show me somebody that's struggling so I can be good to them and he was good to people throughout this it might have been just come up and give you a piece of candy telling you that he loves you might be he found out that Miss Barb couldn't pay for a prescription he'd go pay for a prescription I mean might be that he finds out this Clint right here had never been to Burger King, so he takes him and buys him a Whopper. Huh? How many Whoppers did you end up eating at his expense? Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's just the way Frank was. He told me this. He said, grace was great when I got saved. But he said, I really appreciate grace now that God forgave me from being a prodigal. He once had a great analogy. It's a little later than now, but trees had lost all their leaves. It was cold. It was nasty. He said, if you look at that tree out there, it looks like it's dead. He said, but what you don't see is there's a little sap inside. He said, if you'd have looked at my life the last 30 years, you'd have thought I was dead. You'd have never thought I was a Christian. But there was a little something on the inside. And thanks be unto God. For God and His grace. Prodigals don't have to die in the hog pen. 
They don't have to die in their sin. The Lord will forgive them. Then I thought about this. Why does someone die in their sin? They die in their sin because no one presented the gospel to them. You know, Mark 16, 15 still in the Bible. The Bible says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hmm? Can I say this? I was thinking about this this weekend. The devil has been so hard at work putting so much pressure and stress on people's lives that people come to church looking for help because of all the pressure and stress in their life. And I understand it. We need help. The psalmist cried, Help, Lord. I'm glad the Lord's our helper. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But Brother Ray, the devil's been so hard at work that we have gotten to a point where we just look internally at our needs that we have been blinded, if you will, that we don't look externally to the greatest needs. Yeah, we have problems, but we're going to heaven. There are people all around us that have problems, and they're going to go to hell because we're too busy worried about our problems than we are worried about their problem. Their problem is they're lost. And the devil has so silenced so many Christians to where we no longer present the gospel to folks. You know what the Bible says in Ezekiel 33, 6 about that? But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Friend, we're going to heaven. But I caution you. Long before you see streets of gold, long before you see walls of jasper, gates of pearl, crystal rivers, long before you see the celestial city, we'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ. We'll give an account of the deeds done in our body after we got saved, whether they were good or whether they were bad. But then we're going to be at another judgment. Oh, we're not going to stand in judgment, but we're going to be at the great white throne judgment when the Lord himself ascends to the Bema seat, and heaven and earth are passed away, and the dead are called before the Lord. And there the books will be open, and they'll all be sentenced based on on their sin because Jesus did not pay for their sin they'll have to pay for their own sin in eternity in the lake of fire and I think somewhere brother Clint just before they're sentenced to the lake of fire they'll look over and see us and wonder why we didn't tell them and their blood will be required at our hand my dear friends I'd rather face a little bit of embarrassment now and talk to them about the Lord than to see them sentenced and thrown off into the lake of fire and face a feeling ashamed because I enjoyed the blessings of God and I didn't share them. Hmm? Ladies, if Walmart's having a big sale, you'll tell everybody you know. Fellas, if there's a big sporting event going on, you'll tell everybody you know. Or if you find a place where you can get an oil change cheaper than somebody else you'll tell everybody isn't it amazing we can talk about everything but the Lord people will die in their sin because no one presented unto them the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ that they don't have to die and go to hell now Zelophehad died in his sins the question is will you you don't have to. If you're here today and you're not saved, you can be saved today. If you're here today and you've got some issues in your life, you can get them settled today. 
The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 11, that but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more per perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Colossians 1, 14, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. I've got good news. You don't have to die in your sin. You can have your sin forgiven. I stand before you today, 49 and a half years ago, the Lord forgave me of my sin. Amen. Forgave me of my past sin. Forgave me of my present sin. He's even forgiven me of my future sin. I have been forgiven. Amen. And you can be too. Amen. Say, preach, I know I'm saved, but there's just some things that aren't right. Well, get them made right. Because every day that we don't have a made right, somebody that we could be leading to the Lord, we may be leading them away. Just get them made right. There's nothing like being right with the Lord. There's nothing like having peace with God. I'm glad I got peace with God. This whole world's gone insane. Hmm? This world's in a total chaotic mess. But I don't care, because I know the trumpet's about to sound. I know the Lord's coming for his church. I have peace with God. Do I enjoy things going on in this world? No. Are there things that make me absolutely frustrated? Yes. But it doesn't change the fact that I know the Lord. And I'm right with him. And come what may, he's never forsaken his own. I wonder today, have your sins been forgiven? If not, they can be. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. I want to invite you to come. Say, Preacher, I don't know how to trust in Christ. I don't know how to be saved. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible. You can see what God said and what it takes to be saved. You can be here today. You can be saved, but something's just not right. You know the Lord's not pleased with something in your life. Why don't you come and give it to the Lord and let the Lord break the chain of that thing. Could be here today, could be saved, could be living for the Lord, but you know deep down inside you're not revived and you need to be revived. You ought to come, ask the Lord to revive you. You could be here today and it's been a long time since you presented the gospel to somebody. Why don't you come and ask the Lord to help you to become an ambassador for Him and share the gospel with somebody so they can know they don't have to die and go to hell. I don't know what your need is, but I know the answer, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus loves you, and Jesus wants to help you, and Jesus died for you, and Jesus wants to forgive you. All he's waiting on is for you to want to be forgiven. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. While we're coming and getting a song this morning, God spoke to your heart. Why don't you come and do business with the Lord? They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I know the service wasn't real high. But, Lord, sometimes we, we get caught up in that excitement and we don't listen to what you have to say. And, Lord, I believe he's trying to speak to us today. So I pray you'd speak to hearts. I certainly pray if there be anybody amongst us today still in their sin, I pray today would be the day they'd come and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, maybe there's somebody here today been saved, but, Lord, there's just something isn't just right. I pray they'd get it made right by coming and putting their faith in the Lord. Now, Lord, I pray... For your children that are here living for you, but, Lord, they're not revived. I pray you'd revive them today. Maybe somebody, Lord, just needs to become burdened about sinners so they can be a soul winner. I pray, Lord, you'd speak to hearts, and, Lord, you'd glorify your namesake during this invitation. Have your will and way, Father. We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.